Weeds don't grow randomly, they reveal hidden soil problems. Most gardeners see weeds as unwanted invaders, plants that show up uninvited, stealing water, nutrients, and sunlight from carefully cultivated crops. But what many overlook is that weeds don't just appear at random. Their presence, or even their absence, can provide valuable insight into what's really happening beneath the soil surface. Think of them as nature's clues, hinting at imbalances, nutrient surpluses, compaction, or even high water tables. By learning to interpret these signals, you can turn weeds from enemies into guides for healthier soil and more successful gardens. Weeds as Nature's Soil Indicators Weeds emerge where conditions favor their growth. They are opportunists, exploiting niches that other plants cannot. While many gardeners assume weeds thrive anywhere, in reality, certain species have very specific preferences. Recognizing these preferences can help you understand what your soil might be lacking or overproducing. You know, the weeds growing in your garden can actually tell you a lot about your soil. They're not just nuisances. Each type of weed shows up for a reason. By paying attention to which ones are thriving, you can start to figure out what your soil might be missing or even what it has too much of. It's almost like the weeds are giving you little clues if you're willing to listen. For instance, nettles often appear when nitrogen and phosphorus are too abundant. Horsetail thrives in low pH, soggy soils. Plantain prefers compact acidic ground while Helene grows best in sandy conditions. Each weed has a story to tell and by listening you gain a deeper understanding of your soil's strengths and weaknesses. Reading the presence of weeds is, honestly, a really useful skill. By noticing which weeds are popping up, you can get a pretty good sense of what's happening beneath the surface, and that can help you make better decisions for your garden. When you encounter a patch of weeds, it's worth asking what allowed them to flourish in that exact spot. Cattails, for example, reveal high water tables. Even in areas that seem dry at the surface, their appearance suggests excessive underground moisture. Knowing this in advance can prevent you from placing gardens or crops in poorly drained zones. Sometimes the absence of weeds isn't necessarily a good thing. It could mean that the soil is so poor or compacted that even the most persistent plants can't survive. So, you know, don't always take a weed-free area as a sign of healthy soil. It's important to dig a little deeper and really understand what's going on beneath the surface. Similarly, if you see nettles spreading rapidly where they hadn't been present before, it's often a sign that organic amendments have been over-applied, raising nitrogen and phosphorus beyond balance. Instead of seeing these weeds as a nuisance, think of them as an early warning system pointing to soil conditions that may hinder long-term productivity. When the absence of weeds speaks volumes, it's not always a good sign. Sometimes a weed-free garden bed can actually point to unhealthy soil, believe it or not. Clover, once considered a weed, is now prized in lawns for its resilience and nitrogen-fixing abilities. If you've scattered clover seed generously, but just can't seem to get a healthy patch going, the likely reason is excessive nitrogen in your soil. Clover really thrives in soils that need supplementation, so when nitrogen levels are already high, clover struggles to compete. The absence of cattails in your garden is another silent signal, an encouraging one actually. Without them, you can reasonably assume your soil isn't overly saturated or prone to standing water. Paying attention not just to the plants that thrive but also to those that fail to take root really allows you to read the soil more completely. Sometimes weeds can actually give us the wrong idea about what's really happening in our soil. You know, the seed bank in the soil holds all sorts of surprises and not every weed popping up is a clear sign of a specific soil problem. When weeds mislead, it can really throw us off. Some weeds just aren't reliable indicators of soil conditions, even though they might seem like they are at first glance. Not every weed should be taken at face value. Some species are just so adaptable that honestly, they'll establish themselves almost anywhere, regardless of what's going on beneath the surface. Dandelions are a perfect example of this. 
While they can at times indicate compaction, their lightweight seeds blow so easily in the wind, germinating pretty much wherever they land, so their presence alone doesn't necessarily confirm a compacted soil profile. Purslane is another weed that may confuse gardeners. Its presence could be the result of neighboring infestations rather than your soil composition. Horsetail, one of the oldest surviving plant species on Earth, has such resilience that it grows across a wide range of conditions even though it tends to favor wet and acidic areas. In these cases, correlation does not equal causation. Observing these weeds may raise questions about your soil, but it doesn't provide definitive answers. The role of the seed bank. All right, so let's dive into understanding the seed bank and its practical applications. This is where things get really interesting, folks. You see, the seed bank acts like a hidden reservoir storing seeds from the past, waiting for just the right moment to sprout. It's a bit like nature's way of preserving history, and it plays a crucial role in the life cycle of plants and weeds alike. By getting to know how this works, we can better manage our gardens and fields, making sure we work with nature, not against it. One of the most fascinating aspects of weeds is their persistence in the soil seed bank. Beneath the surface lies a natural storehouse of seeds deposited over decades, sometimes even centuries. These seeds remain dormant until conditions become favorable, at which point they germinate and emerge seemingly out of nowhere. This explains why horsetail might suddenly reappear even if the soil is no longer waterlogged, or why nettles can sprout after years of absence when nutrient levels rise. The seed bank ensures a constant supply of opportunistic species, meaning weeds can sometimes reflect past conditions rather than current ones. Understanding this dynamic helps gardeners avoid drawing the wrong conclusions. You know, using weeds as a soil barometer can be surprisingly helpful. Sometimes the types of weeds popping up in your garden can actually prompt you to check your soil's health, just like reaching for a soil test kit when you spot something unusual. While weeds shouldn't really be seen as an exact diagnostic tool, they can definitely act as a barometer, sort of an early signal that it's time to investigate further. For example, if you notice that only dandelions seem to survive in a certain patch, well, that might suggest soil compaction that's worth addressing, and if nettles suddenly take over one corner of your vegetable bed, it could be a sign of nutrient excess. So, these clues can be pretty useful if you pay attention. Taking corrective action starts with, well, simply paying attention to the weeds growing in your garden. By noticing patterns and changes, you can respond early and keep your soil and your plants in better shape overall. The key is to treat weeds like the yellowing leaves of a plant or the appearance of blossom and rot. They're not, you know, definitive answers, but more like indicators pointing to potential issues. Once identified, gardeners can take corrective actions such as adjusting organic inputs, improving drainage, or loosening compacted soils. Real-world application in the garden really brings these ideas to life. Consider the case of a tomato bed that begins producing nettles after years of balance. Without nettles appearing anywhere else in the yard, their sudden presence suggests the soil has shifted, most likely due to over-fertilization. Since nettles thrive in high nitrogen and phosphorus environments, they serve as a living alert that the soil is no longer in equilibrium. Rather than viewing this as a setback, it provides valuable direction. By cutting back on organic inputs and balancing nutrient levels, the gardener can restore conditions favorable to tomatoes while reducing weed pressure naturally. So as we wrap up, remember that understanding your garden's weeds isn't just about control. It's honestly about learning from them. Take a moment, get outside and look closely at what's growing. Use these observations to guide your next steps, and you'll be well on your way to a healthier, more productive garden. Why you should pay attention. Ignoring weeds as random intruders means overlooking an accessible source of information about your soil. While they may not provide the precision of laboratory tests, they do offer clues that are visible, free, and immediate. By paying attention to patterns, 
where certain weeds thrive, where others fail, and when sudden changes occur, you can make better decisions about crop placement, soil amendments, and long-term management. Weeds tell you not only what can survive but also what should be questioned. Their presence is not always bad news, sometimes it's simply a reminder of what your soil is capable of supporting under certain conditions. The next time you bend down to pull a weed, resist the urge to see it as a useless nuisance. Look at it instead as a messenger. It may be pointing to compacted ground, waterlogged conditions, nutrient overload, or even historical soil changes locked in the seed bank. Interpreting these signs correctly turns gardening into a deeper dialogue with the soil itself. At Soil and Crop Central, the goal is to equip you with knowledge that makes your garden thrive naturally. If this guide helped you see weeds in a new light, make sure to subscribe and share this resource with fellow gardeners. Together, we can continue uncovering the hidden messages beneath our feet.